What's up guys, welcome back for another UU Live. Today we have a uh, really cool team that I built earlier today. Uh, I've been testing it out, it's doing pretty well. We're actually uh, pretty high up on the UU ladder, I'll just show you guys right here. Um, I think I'm like 200th or something. Uh, not too high, not too low either. Uh, 190 actually, so this is pretty good. Uh, if you check down here a little bit, go down. 1576 I think it was. I saw, uh, saw Joey somewhere around here, so that's pretty cool. We're a little bit higher than Joey. Uh, Pokey MMD on the uh, on the ladder. Uh, still a while to go uh, until we hit the top, but uh, I'm not too concerned about the UU ladder. But I uh, just want to go over the, te the team really quickly because it's a really cool team, and I wanted to use uh, Curse Lax because we just lost to it in the uh, in the NBA. And it's a Pokemon that I never really got to use in UU. I've never actually built a team with it, uh, and I've been testing with it, and it's such a good Pokemon, dude. If you can eliminate your opponent's Ghost types, this thing runs house. On, on teams like it's it's almost impossible to break like you need a strong fighting type move uh, Or like a really powerful special attacker that has boosts so uh, This is Snorlax as you can see curse return rest and sleep talk. It's got a standard spread I grabbed this from uh, from the analysis on Smogon uh, next up. We have uh, standard mega Aerodactyl This is a pursuit trapper so that we can get rid of ghosts the Snorlax only offensive move is return uh, also, great rock coverage right here. Earthquake and Pursuit is also really nice. Uh, defensive Celebi to take on fighting types, as the team was already pretty weak to fighting as it is. I got a couple of other fighting checks on the team, but uh, Celebi is my main answer. Uh, also, handles Pokemon like Crocodile pretty well because it doesn't take too much from knockoff unless it's banded, and it can recover off the damage. Uh, Giga Drain, Recover, Thunder Wave, and Stealth Rocks. I really wanted um, Psychic on here for, uh, for um, Conkeldur mainly. Uh, but I found that this set was just overall better. Uh, next up we have a uh, defensive Tentacruel over here with Liquid Ooze, Black Sludge, uh, Rapid Spin, Scald, Toxic Spikes. Haze actually comes in very handy. Uh, I like this speed stat as well, it's really nice. Uh, it outspeeds Honchkrow, Adam and Honchkrow. So this is a cool uh, cool little stat right here that Celebi and Tentacruel both share being base 100s. And uh, very, very defensive Pokemon. Great Rapid Spinner in the tier. Uh, Blastoise is clearly superior. But uh, this is uh, this is probably second best to it. Uh, then we have a Choice Scarf Darmanitan. I needed a little more speed on the team. Fastest thing was Mega Aerodactyl. This thing actually outspeeds Mega Aerodactyl as well as Mega Sceptile, uh, which the team doesn't handle too well. Um, nor Mega Beedrill, so this is kind of like my check to them. Uh, obviously, I can't switch in on hits, but whenever Darmanitan gets a free switch, it's essentially a kill, or a U turn out into something that can get a kill. So, uh, Flare Blitz, Rock Slide, U turn, and Earthquake. And finally, Spec Sylveon, probably the best wall breaker in the tier right now with Hyper Voice, Psy Shock, and Power Fire, and Baton Pass. Realistically, you're never clicking anything but Hyper Voice, but it's just an overall good set. Uh, to have this uh, this kind of coverage. Psy Shock is obviously for like Crobat and stuff like that. And Hidden Power Fire to be able to hit uh, Fortress and um, Mega Aggron especially. So let's just hop into a game. I spend enough te uh, time analyzing the team. You guys get a good feel of it. And uh, we'll get a couple of games. I'm just going to pause it until we get one, guys. I also have to get a little bit of water. As you can probably tell, my voice is not uh, up to par right now. So I'll be right back. Alright, and we finally got one. I actually had to wait a while after I got back from getting some water uh, to, to get this game. But... It's all good. Looking at uh, team matchup, uh, Snorlax is looking pretty good, other than the Machamp right there. Uh, we're going to have to eliminate that thing. Luckily, we have a lot of Pokemon that can handle that. Uh, P2 is looking like a little bit of an issue because I can't just spam Hyper Voice, so I'm going to have to weaken that thing a little bit as well. Uh, I think what I want to do, actually, is lead off with Celebi uh, because I can see a Machamp lead. And Celebi takes the least uh, amount from it, as he actually chooses to lead off with Fortress, which is perfectly fine. Uh, these things typically don't carry bug moves. They should, actually, because of Celebi, but I'm gonna just Stealth Rock up, get him up, and uh, we have a Rapid Spinner, so does he, but I'm just gonna Thunder Wave this thing, uh, paralyze it, uh, allow it to not move sometimes, which is awesome, and uh, we're gonna go straight into Tentacruel on this, as he's just uh, Spike Stacking. He does not have a Ghost to stop my spin, so this is nice. He gets paralyzed on the turn. Hopefully, um, he was going for a Volt Switch right there, so we could, uh, so we were able to stop that. And we're gonna get off this spin right here. He's gonna get fully paralyzed again, and we see that he is left over. So this uh, shows us that he's not a Custap variant, which is nice to know. Uh, I would very much like to get up Toxic Spikes, but I think I'm just gonna Scald right here to weaken this Fortress. Uh, as he's gonna Rapid Spin my rocks away. And uh, now I'm going to take this as an opportunity to go for uh, for Toxic Spikes as he goes for his Volt Switch. Awesome. So anything coming in is going to get poisoned right now, which is really cool. Uh, I would really like to poison the P2, especially Toxic Poison, so hopefully he doesn't come in immediately. Uh, as he actually goes into Haxorus, and does he have a Lumberry? 
Uh, I don't think we would know that right away, actually. I'm not sure about that, but uh, I think it takes a turn before it takes effect. So I'm just going to go into Celebi, because Celebi is a pretty good answer to this. Uh, as he goes for a Dragon Dance, does he have the Lumberry? Does he eat it up now? No, he does not. Okay. Uh, we're just going to go for Rocks right here. Um, he goes for a Poison Jab. That does a lot of damage. Uh, he has Life Orb. Uh, we're able to get up Rocks, though, so that's very nice. And I could predict the Poison Jab, technically, and go into Tentacruel. But I don't want to lose Tentacruel, because he can still Spike Stack me later. Uh, so, in fact, what I'm going to do here... Um, I'm just gonna let Celebi drop actually because he's probably gonna go for the dragon move on this turn He actually goes for another jab. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm thinking what can we do here? Uh, Alright, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into uh, Tentacruel right here. I'm gonna bait him to go for the earthquake and we're gonna go straight on to Aerodactyl as He goes for the EQ awesome. We scout for that and now I'm expecting the dragon move So I'm gonna switch out into Sylveon uh, he's already revealed a jab. Yep, he goes for the Outrage. Beautiful. And he's not locked in. Um, so I could switch back into Tentacruel right here, which is exactly what I'm going to do. As he goes for a jab. Awesome. And we're able to knock out the Haxorus to its Life Orb recoil, so that's really good. Uh, the Toxic Spikes are still up. We only lost Celebi, which is really nice. He goes into his Fortress. Uh, I'm just going to go for Scald. He's eventually going to be able to get rid of the Rocks, but what's really important here is the Toxic Spike. I need to make sure this stays up. So... We're going to do that right now as he goes for a, well, he gets fully parried on that turn. I'm going to go for another Scald here. Leave him in range of one last one, unless we crit, of course, which would knock him out. He's going to go for a Rapid Spin. That doesn't really matter. I'm going to keep going for this Spike until he gets fully parried. And then it'll remain up, so that's really nice. Uh, he's going to go for Stealth Rocks. Uh, I'm going to go for Rapid Spin. I do not want these up. They hurt uh, Darmanitan, which is a big, uh, big win con right now. He gets fully parried on that turn, and I'm just going to fire off a Scald now. He doesn't have a solid switch in because anything gets burned. Uh, goes into P2. That's awesome. He gets the Trace of Liquid Ooze. And uh, we're going to go for a Scald right here. He's going to take Poison Damage. And I think I might just get up another one um, at this point, which is exactly what I'm going to do. If he has Discharge, that's fine. He's going to go for Thunder Wave, actually, so that's cool. And now I'm going to go into something that uh, basically can kill the Fortress, uh, as well as putting a lot of damage on this P2. And I think that would be the... Well, he doesn't have a solid switch into Sylveon anymore, so I could go into that. Uh, or I could just Scald here, which is probably what I'm going to do. Yeah, he's going to try attack. Uh, I didn't want to switch anything in on that. So we're just going to go for the Scald right there. He's going to take Poison Damage. And now I'm going to go into Sylveon on this turn as I'm expecting a Recover. As he does go for the Recover, awesome. And I'm going to go for the Hyper Voice right here. Weaken this thing. Takes 38, very nice. He goes for the Thunder Wave, that's fine. I don't really mind. Uh, my Sylveon being slowed down, it was probably slower than a lot of his team anyway. Uh, I'm going to get fully parried on that turn. I'm just going to keep spamming Hyper Voice. If he wants to keep recovering, that's fine. He's just wasting Recovers at this point. Uh, gonna take 38 from that and uh, basically he always has to recover on my hyper voice so this is perfectly fine this is absolutely fine and uh, I don't think we're actually faster than his fortress but he can never switch it in which is the good thing he's down to 11 recovers we still have 12 hyper voices and he can't switch anything in on this so eventually we're gonna get full parried which is what I want uh, it's not gonna be on that turn I'm skipping turns because it's a little bit redundant guys uh, are we getting higher rolls now? I got 43 on that Hyper Voice. That was actually quite a high roll. Uh, gonna get that one off. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I think at this point what I can do is actually... No, 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 no. I, I still have to keep spamming Hyper Voice because basically that Machamp is keeping me from setting up. Um, again, he can't switch anything in on this Hyper Voice. So, unless he banks on the full para and goes into Fortress now, which wouldn't be terrible for him. Uh, I do have two Paralyzed Mons, but uh, that's okay. He goes for the Tri-Attack as we get full Parrot again. That's fine. I'm just going to go for another Hyper Voice on this turn as he goes for another Tri-Attack. Uh, if we get a High Roll, we might actually knock him out here. Uh, he does live the Poison, and uh, do I think this is an opportunity to start setting up? I think I might do that, yeah. I'm going to go to Lax here because I'm getting kind of tired of this uh, as he gets the Recover off. I'm going to go for a Curse. And, uh, basically, this thing can Thunder Wave me if it wants, but eventually he's going to have to hit me with something. Uh, and when he does, he's going to allow me to rest. So that's very nice. Uh, I'm gonna get the curse up. He's gonna be able to... Uh, this might actually kill him. 
He's going to be able to uh, to rapid spin right here. I don't mind that too much. I'm actually just going to keep going for curse as he goes for the rapid spin. That's absolutely fine. If he allows me to get up enough curses, his Machamp won't be able to do anything to me unless it crits me. So I'm just going to keep going for it. He goes for Stealth Rocks. That's absolutely fine. And now pretty much his Machamp can't touch me. So I'm just going to go for the return on this turn. Uh, we should be slower than this fortress as well. He gets up more spikes. That's absolutely fine. Uh, we're almost going to knock out the fortress right there. And I'm just going to go for another return on this turn. We should be able to take a dynamic punch, no problem. I know that at plus three defense, um, I can take a, uh, a Mian Shao's reckless high jump kick scarfed. Like it does like 45%. So this is going to do absolutely nothing. I'm just going to go for the return as he's going to go for the leech seed. That's fine. He's going to take a tremendous amount from this return. It's going to get a lot back right there. Uh, but at this point, I think I'm going to go for rest because I don't like this, um, this paralysis as he actually gets the full para on that turn. I'm just going to rest again. It's fine. Uh, again, he can't do anything to me unless he crits me. Look at that. 17%. That's absolutely nothing. Uh, we're going to get the rest off on that turn. And uh, I'm going to go for Sleep Talk. Basically, anything but a rest is good at this point. And um, if I curse up a couple more times, it's pretty much game over. So uh, He's going to go straight into Machamp on that turn. Very risky play, as I could have Sleep Talked a, uh, a return. And I think it would have actually knocked out his Machamp. I'm going to Sleep Talk again. He can uh, Dynamic Punch confuse me, but I'm not too worried about it because my defense is raised as well. He's going to go for the Dynamic Punch. Only going to do 29%, going to get the Confusion, and we are going to hit ourselves in Confusion. Now we're going to wake up, so pretty much I have to uh, break through Confusion and rest right here as he goes for a knockoff and gets rid of our leftovers, so that's a good play uh, on his part. We actually hit ourselves again, and that's going to be the end of Snorlax right there, so that's very, very unfortunate as we hit ourselves twice. Uh, but now what I can do is go straight into Aerodactyl and... I think I kill everything on his team, actually. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Or even Darmanitan first. That might be the play. Yeah, I'm gonna go for uh, I'm gonna go for return. It's fine. He goes for dynamic punch. I'm gonna go into Darm first. I take a lot of damage, but I'm gonna go for the flare blitz. I'm gonna be able to knock something out on his team here. It's a two hit KO on his cloister. Uh, it should be an Oko on this Machamp because it's very powerful. Okay, well, very close. Uh, as he goes for a dynamic punch, knocks us out. That's fine. I'm going to go into, do I want to get rid of the rocks first? Um, maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Thing is, Shell Smash and Cloister is really annoying. So I think Tenacruel has to be in when that thing comes in. I think I need to get up a Toxic Spike for the Cloister. So that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to go into uh, Tenacruel. I should be able to live his knockoff. And I absolutely need to get up this Toxic Spike right here. I need to break through. He goes for the Dynamic Punch just to get the Confusion. Parafusion is a smart strategy. As we get fully parried, wonderful. Uh, his Dynamic Punch only did 24. So he might actually not be able to knock us out right here with the knockoff. I'm not sure. Uh, as he does, okay. That's fine. Uh, so very unlucky turns right there for us. But I'm just going to go for the Wing Attack right here. Uh, he might have the Bullet Punch. Might be one of his last moves. Uh, as he does, that's not able to knock us out, though. And basically, I need a very, very big crit on the Cloister to be able to knock it out. So, it's all going to come down to this. Uh, that was uh, a few very unfortunate turns right there with the Snorlax and the... Uh, uh, and the... Uh, the... What was it that got confused? The Tentacruel. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm going to go for the Stone Edge. We're actually going to miss. So, yeah, that's pretty much going to seal the game. Unless he's adamant, because uh, he might not outspeed us. So we'll go for Stone Edge. He is uh, Jolly, and that's going to end the game right there. So very unfortunate. Not even going to say GG because all that came down to was hacks. A uh, little bit salty there, but it's okay. So uh, I see a Beedrill lead on the other side, which means my immediate lead is Darmanitan. Uh, pressure that thing, scare it out. I'm going to go for Flare Blitz as he protects, and then I'm probably going to switch into... Uh, not sure, actually, what I have for Tentacruel. What do I have for Tentacruel? I guess Aerodactyl and Earthquake. That could be a play. Um, he actually leads with Hydreigon, which outspeeds me. So I'm not going to play games with this. I'm just going to go straight into Sylveon. And Sylveon's pretty good here because it gets off a huge Hyper Voice. But he actually chooses to U-turn, risking uh, the fact that I might go for a uh, U-turn of my own. He's actually going to go into his Beedrill. Um, Tentacruel does pretty well against this, so I'm just going to go straight into it. He shouldn't Drill Run. He should uh, Poison Jab, if anything. Yep. And uh, now on the drill run, I'm going to go into arrow. Uh, he should drill run here, in theory. 
as he goes for the drill run. Yep, and that's not going to hit us. And now we're going to pursue this thing. Uh, he's faster than us right now. He gets off a U-turn. That's not going to do much. And we're going to be able to knock this thing down really low to 11%. So when we get up rocks, this thing is gone. Uh, he goes into his Mammoth Swine. Um, I don't have a great counter to this, but I do have a Snorlax, which is not bad. Celebi, Celebi can tank hits from this thing. It can tank an Ice Shard, that's for sure. He goes for Stealth Rocks anyway. Uh, I scare this thing out with a Giga Drain, potentially. So I'm actually just going to go straight for the Giga Drain. Uh, as he goes into Hydreigon, that's fine. Uh, and I'm just going to recover, actually. Uh... I want a Thunder Wave at the same time, because if his Beedrill comes in, then he's slower than me. So I'm going to Thunder Wave. He goes through the U-turn, it's not going to do much at all. That's a quad effective move, and it did, just did 38%. Uh, he's going to go into Arcanine, that's absolutely fine. Um, I kind of want to test out to see what this thing is. I think it's defensive from the makeup of his team, because he has nothing else that, like, he, he, he's, he loses to a lot of different Pokemon if this thing isn't defensive. So I'm just going to get up rocks here. As he goes, uh, he gets fully parried on that turn, so a little unfortunate for our opponent. Uh, I'm going to go straight into Tentacruel now, and I'm going to spin these rocks away. As he is going to get fully parried again. And uh, we're just going to go for the rapid spin right here. Uh, get rid of these rocks. As he goes for the wild charge, is able to knock us out, so that is definitely offensive. And now I'm going to basically keep every one of his Pokemon out of here. Uh, by going into Aerodactyl because nothing switches in on a Stone Edge right now like absolutely nothing on his team Maybe Mamoswine. That's about it. He goes into Whimsicott, uh, which is not fun because I missed the Stone Edge once again. I'm just going to go for the Wing Attack. Hope hopefully he's not Stun Spore, and he is, of course, uh, as we are going to land the Wing Attack and knock out his Whimsicott, but now we are slower than his Beedrill. However, his Tentacruel has to come in and spin at some point if he wants his Beedrill alive. So I'm just going to switch into, um, into Snorlax on this as he is going to go for the Stealth Rocks again. That's absolutely fine. He's very adamant about getting those up. Um, wait a minute. Let's start cursing, actually. He goes for the EQ. Uh, does a lot of damage because he's Life Orb, but he won't knock us out with the next one, and I can rest. The next one's going to do about 30%, uh, and he's going to be killing himself to Life Orb, and if I get another curse on one of my Sleep Talks, then he will not be able to 3-hit KO me here. Uh, that only did 36%, actually. So... He gets a crit, okay. All right, dude. Uh, we get a return on that turn. It's not really gonna matter. Um, well, it might actually. It might, because if he goes in Hydreigon, he basically gives me a free switch into Sylveon, and I might be able to conserve this. Not that I really need to, but, like it's looking like Darmanitan can clean sweep with EQ once the Hydreigon is gone. He actually chooses to go into his Tentacruel, so very interesting play, because this thing can't knock me out with anything necessarily. Uh, so I'm just gonna go for a sleep talk here as he goes for a knockoff and gets rid of my leftovers I don't even know if a scald can take me out from this point. So I'm just gonna go for rest Because uh, we will wake up on the following turn He does not knock us out with his scald and I am able to get up a rest. So uh, A little bit weird for him to be doing that. Uh, whoa, 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 I just clicked curse. No, 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 sleep talk All right, he goes for rapid spin and gets rid of the rocks. That's fine. That means his Beedrill is going to live. We actually get a return on that turn, do a huge amount of damage to this Tentacruel. I'm going to Sleep Talk again. Uh, he can't really switch anything in comfortably on this right now, so uh, we're going to Sleep Talk a curse right there. That's awesome. I'm going to curse up again, and he's just going to straight forfeit knowing that he cannot break this wall in front of him. That's awesome. All right, cool. So Snorlax clutch living with 1% right there uh, after a couple more haxy turns. Uh, I probably should have just switched out into Celebi on the, um, on the Whimsicott, to be honest. That was probably a bad play on my part, uh, because I was pretty sure he had Stun Spore from the way he brought it in. Stone Edge would have knocked out the Whimsicott, though, which is why I don't really understand that play. But, uh, like, I would have just stayed in, realistically, because you don't have a switch into a Stone Edge. Everything dies on your team, or gets to it KO'd, so... That was a little bit strange, but anyway, uh, we'll move on to the next game. Hopefully we can get two more wins in the last 10 minutes. That would be cool. So I'm actually just going to pause it, guys, because it's taking a while once again to get another game, and we will be right back. All right, and we got one, and we got another Mega Beedrill team. So I might even put Mega Beedrill on the uh, on the thumbnail. No, 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 I'm not going to do that. But um, my, opponent, uh, my opponent's most likely lead is probably his Swampert. Uh, or Galvantula, actually, is not bad for him at all. Um, Sash Galvantula, yeah. So what I'm actually going to do is lead Darmanitan. It's pretty safe. 
Uh, if he leads with Beedrill, I click Flare Blitz and swap out on the following turn. If he leads with Galvantula, I break its Sash. If he leads with Fortress, uh, this thing is sturdy, so I do not want to knock it into sturdy. I'm going to go for the U-turn on the first turn. Uh, if he swaps into something like Swampert, that's awesome. That gives me a free switch. Uh, he actually chooses to stay in. We do more than what he gets back with Leftovers Recovery, which is really nice. As here, I'm just going to go into Celebi. Expecting him to not want a Volt Switch. That was a curious play, but all right. Uh, as Beedrill is more than likely to come out. Uh, actually, he goes into Galvantula. That's not a bad play. He's got two bugs, so this one can do just as much damage to me. Uh, I don't really want to stay in here. At the same time, I don't have a great switch on my team. Um, Sylveon's not bad. I think I'm going to go Sylveon because I think it two-hit KOs his Fortress. Goes for Sticky Web. I can spin that away later. It's not a problem. I'm just going to go for the Hyper Voice right here. He should, in theory, just Thunder. Yep, there we go. It does 36%. Respectable amount. Going to knock him down to a Sash, and uh, I'm just going to go for the Hyper Voice again. This is a big threat that he's weakening on my team, so... Uh, he actually chooses to go straight into his Beatrill. <laughs> On a Hyper Voice crit. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh my god, that's huge. Uh, we get rid of probably the biggest threat on his team at this point. Uh, he chooses to go into Swampert, that's absolutely fine. I'm just going to go into Celebi at this point. Um, this should be his Mega in theory. Uh, no, his Beedrill's his Mega. He goes for an Earthquake, that does absolutely nothing. Uh, I'm just going to get a Brox at this point because it just means that uh, his Galvantula is dead when it comes in. And it also means that I get a good chip damage off on Hydreigon. Uh, he goes straight into his uh, Fortress, however. And I'm going to... Does he have a Flare Blitz switch in? He does in Swampert, technically. I don't know how many of those he can take, though. <laughs> I'm just going to go for the T-Wave here. Because uh, I like T-Waving this thing. As he goes for a Toxic, that's fine. We are uh, Natural Cure. I'm just going to swap out into Darmanitan at this point, get off my Natural Cure, and uh, he's more than likely just going to Rapid Spin, yep. And now we can go for a Flare Blitz and pretty much knock something out. Uh, he goes into Swampert, this is the only thing on his team that can take it, takes it quite well because we're not Life Orb, and uh, every time Swampert comes in it's pretty much a free switch for Celebi at this point. Uh, he can go for Rocks if he wants, but I can get up mine as well. He goes for a Scald. Uh, and I'm just going to set up rocks once again. Uh, he can go on back into Fortress, that's fine, but it's parried. It has the chance to get para turns. Uh, as he actually goes into his Galvantula, this is really, really good. Uh, because th what this is going to allow me to do is go into Snorlax at this point, because his webs are already up and I really don't care about my speed being lowered. Uh, as he's just going to go for a Bug Buzz, as you can see, that does absolutely nothing. And now, I think I want to predict the Fortress to come in. At the same time, not really. Yeah, exactly. If I would have gone into Darmanitan right there, that would have been really bad. Uh, we're able to get rid of Jeff the Spider. And uh, his only solid switch into this is once again the Fortress, uh, which every time that thing comes in now, it takes rock damage. It has a chance to get fully parried. Uh, he actually goes into Swampert, uh, interestingly enough, as I can start cursing on this. Uh, as he goes for Earthquake, that does a good amount. That does 31%. Uh, I'm actually just going to... How much will it do now? 20? Yeah, I'm just going to return right here. Uh, get off some damage on this. I want to put it in range of Flare Blitz, basically. As uh, that seems to be in about range. Uh, as he uh, roars us out into Tentacruel, which is fine. I can definitely live in Earthquake. And I want to get rid of these webs. So let's Rapid Spin. We're actually still faster than a Swampert, which is interesting. Uh, as now I can just throw off a Scald right here. Uh, and that's probably my best play. Because it catches the Fortress. It also puts this thing in range of Flare Blitz. And now he has no switch-ins. He actually goes for a Scald on that turn, which is a uh, curious play. I don't know what he was trying to do there. Maybe catch my Celebi. Don't really know why. Um, again, I, could, I have Natural Cure. I can just switch out. So uh, I'm just going to go for Scald again as 21%. Uh, get the burn off as his Earthquake is going to be not be able to kill us. Uh, on that turn, and we're able to knock out his Swampert, so after a couple of uh, Clutch Scalds right there, we finally get a burn. That's actually the first burn I've gotten with Tentacruel since uh, since testing with this team. My opponent forfeits, that's going to be a win for us, we're up to 1584. Uh, is that higher or lower than we were before? Hold on a second. Where were we? Uh, we were like 190th, right? Uh, 1586. Did we drop that much from that one loss? That's crazy. What? How many points did I lose? Like 16? We only gained six from that game. Like, in the UU ladder, I don't know why, but, like, laddering up is, like, really, really slow. So, like, Piff. Piff is at the top, if you don't know who Piff is. Uh, he's always at the top of ladders for some reason. Uh, Pokemon is fun. 
And, uh, yeah. That's, uh, okay. We got one, we got one. Um, Mean Xiao, problem. I don't have a switch into that thing. Celebi is not a bad lead here. I just don't like the Nido King. Uh, I like Tentacruel as a lead against the majority of his team. Actually, Tentacruel does really well, but again, it's that, it's that Nido King. That's what's scaring me. Nido King is uh, is a little bit of an issue. I don't have a lot of switch-ins. He actually leads with his Dawn Fan, which is nice. I'm just gonna throw up a Scald. Uh, gonna bring this thing really low, as he seems to be AV actually. Uh, I'll be able to take that. No, he's not AV. He's leftovers. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go for a layer of toxic spikes right here Expecting him to want to switch out into a shaman. So now uh, he has to go into his Nido King at some point or he's gonna let stuff get poisoned uh, On this thing. I'm just going to switch hard into Celebi as uh, That's that pretty much covers every option that this thing can go for even hidden power ice if it has like a bug move It probably won't do too much. Uh, I'm just gonna set up rocks at this point as he goes into his Nido King. Yep. Uh, now this thing is scary. <laughs> this thing uh, is like the scariest thing for me ever. Um, probably don't outspeed it with Tentacruel. Snorlax can actually take hits from this, actually. Uh, Sludge Wave, you'll see right there, is only does 28%. And uh, I'm probably just going to go for the return right here, because this thing can't really touch me outside of Super Power. Interesting. It lowers his defense in the process, though, and takes a hit of Life Orb. So this return is going to do a lot of damage. <laughs> And uh, whatever move he goes for next, he might just go for a Sludge Wave uh, to try to catch my Celebi. I think what I'm going to do is actually go into... Aerodactyl is pretty much a failsafe because uh, it resists... It doesn't resist that and he gets a crit. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, Aerodactyl is pretty much my answer to Shaman, so now I have to watch out for rocks and stuff. Uh, he goes straight into Dawn Fan. Um... I think going straight into Tentacruel is my play, for sure, uh, as he goes for Rapid Spin. He knows that he's in range of, well, he can't absorb Toxic Spikes anymore, right? And I can just go into Celebi and Giga Drain this thing afterwards. I don't think it'll kill, though. That's the problem. Uh, yeah, no, I need this thing weakened. Uh, he's going to go straight into Shaman this time. That's fine. Uh, I can go straight back into Celebi on this thing. I just don't want Houndoom coming in. That's the thing I'm most worried about. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go straight into Celebi. It's fine. Uh, as he does pull the double into Mean Shao, actually. This is fine, because I can take a U-turn. As you guys can see. Even for Mean Shao. And uh, he might expect a Giga Drain or something like that. Uh, he's going to go straight into Houndoom, which is good play. But now our rocks are up, which is nice. Uh, I don't want to stay in on a fire move right here. This thing carries Sucker Punch, which is such an issue. Ugh. Uh, I'm going to go into Lax, because I expect him to Fire Blast. We should be able to take it. Uh, he actually goes for Dark Pulse. Okay, that's a good play, too. Uh, we can take another one. Can't we? No, it did 19. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sylveon. Sylveon and get a kill, basically. He's gonna go for another Dark Pulse. Uh, Fire Blast is not gonna be able to take me out. I kinda wanna predict the Aggron to come in. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go straight for the HP Fire. Because, realistically, it's either Aggron or, like, nothing. This thing does not want to stay in on me. Yep, there's the Aggron. Awesome, we catch it before the Mega Evolution. This is going to do a lot. 60%, beautiful. And now we can go into uh, Tentacruel, I believe. Yep, let's go into Tentacruel. Uh, we're almost done this game. He's going to go for a Head Smash. This is Banded Head Smash, it seems. As uh, that's just going to give me a free Darmanitan Flare Blitz, I think? Yeah, that's just going to give me a free Flare Blitz. So, yep, let's go for it. Donphan should, in theory, at the range it's at, uh, maybe, maybe, I'm not sure. It didn't take a lot from Scald, though, which I was surprised about. Then again, Tentacruel's not too strong. I still have my Rock Setter, so he shouldn't want to spin them away right away. Uh, in theory, his best play is probably into Mean Xiao and U-Turn. He actually goes into Houndoom. This takes a lot from Flare Blitz. Like, I don't know if you guys know, but this takes a tremendous amount from Flare Blitz. I just need to keep Aerodactyl alive to sweep up his team. I think. Uh, like, I Thunder Wave Mean Xiao with Celebi, and then I just win. So. Um. Do I need this? This thing is good. I don't want him to Nasty Plot. That's the problem. I'm just going to Flare Blitz. Yeah, it's going to do a good amount. And uh, he's going to go for the Dark Pulse, knock us down to 4%. And I'm going to switch into Lax here. Because. Um, actually, hold on a second. 
Yeah, because if he sucker punches, then I get back enough recovery to the point where I can go for a, uh, a rest on the following turn. And this thing doesn't come back in on rocks anymore, so he would have to spin them away. Uh, and then I, that gives me a free switch back into Celebi, which gets back up rocks anyway. He can't knock me out with Dawn Fan. He can go for a knockoff, but it doesn't do too much. I'm just explaining my thought process, guys. He's actually going to go into Shaman. Okay. Uh, this thing is Leftovers. So I'm not even sure if it knocks us out. But uh, Celebi is always my play because he doesn't have uh, a good response anymore. He goes for Seed Flare. He gets a crit. That's not going to matter. I'm just going to recover all this damage off. Uh, he would need another Seed Flare crit two in a row to be able to knock me out, but we're actually faster than his Shaman. Uh, goes for a Toxic. We're Natural Cure just like you, buddy. And uh, now I'm expecting him to attack me on this turn. Uh, I'm going to go into Sylveon here. We're going to get our Natural Cure. And uh, he goes for Psychic, which does near to nothing. And Hyper Voice should be able to, well, not kill this. I don't think it'll kill Shaman. Uh, he goes for Seed Flare, does a lot. Uh, yeah, it's not going to kill Shaman. But now what I can do is sack off my Snorlax uh, to this Seed Flare and go into Aerodactyl and pick up a kill. Basically right here. We're just going to go for the Wing Attack. Um, in theory, Wing Attack plus another Wing Attack should be able to take out Dawn Fan, so he can't really switch into that either. We're able to eliminate the Shaman, which is pretty big, as now he has to go into his Dawn Fan, basically. Yep. Uh, this is going to give me yet another free switch back into Celebi. And at this point, I think I can just Giga Drain. He goes for the Rapid Spin. I don't really want to uh, to get up rocks again, because that just gives Houndoom a free switch. And that's bad. So I'm just going to go for a Giga Drain here. It's going to knock out his Dawn Fan, which is awesome. Uh, if he goes into Mean Shao, I recover to get back up to full on the uh, uh, U-turn. He's actually going to go into the Houndoom. Uh, it doesn't seem like he has Sucker Punch, because he didn't go for it last time. Like, I mean, that doesn't mean anything, but I think I actually have to stay in and Giga Drain. I'm not sure, though. Uh, this is, like, the first time I have to calc this episode, guys. So, bear with me, please. I didn't even have a calc open. So, that's uh, that's actually getting really much better. Uh, the fact that I'm not uh, almost ever calcing. Baton Pass. Uh, yeah, let's go with uh, OU Baton Pass. It should be the... Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's okay. And we'll go for uh, Houndoom. Mega Houndoom. Uh, UU Nasty Plot. Fire Blast does have a chance to take me out. Um, Dark Pulse doesn't. I think... I think I have to keep Celebi regardless and Aerodactyl in the back. So I think my sack is Sylveon here. As he actually pulls a double into Mean Shao. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, because if this thing locks itself into High Jump Kick... Because he won't take me out with U-Turn, I don't think. Unless he's banded, which he doesn't seem like he is because of the damage on Celebi from earlier. Uh, he does lock himself in a high jump kick, which is going to give me a free Thunder Wave with Celebi right here. If he switches out into Houndoom, that's pretty much game over because I'm pretty sure Giga Drink can knock it out. Or close. It's very close to knock it out. Um, it's a roll. Uh, he actually goes for high jump kick again, gets his Mean Shao paralyzed. And we're going to go for the Stealth Rocks on this turn. Uh, as he does switch out into Houndoom, that's a very good play. As now I have to sack something else here. We're going to go into Darm Manitan, I think, is my play. Yeah, I'm going to go Darm. Let's see what he does. Uh, he goes for the Dark Pulse. I don't know why he thinks that that can take me out. But I'm going to go into Aerodactyl now. I'm going to go for the Wing Attack and really hope he doesn't have the Sucker Punch. We'll see right here. He does not have the Sucker Punch, which I mean, which means I think Aerodactyl is just going to uh, straight up win us this game. With the Wing Attack, there we go. We're able to knock out the Mean Shout. I was so scared of Sucker Punch the entire game, and like he didn't end up having it, so that's really cool. Uh, yeah, that puts us at 1599, which is a little bit actually higher than we were before, uh, if I'm not mistaken. 1599 puts us at about 150th on the, uh, on the UU ladder, so really happy about that. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to check out my other lives. I put out four to five a week. Uh, my league matches that come out on Saturdays and Sundays, the team builder and the match itself. And uh, be sure to check out my Facebook and my Twitter, always in the description down below, as well as if I'm doing a live with anybody else, their links are in the description. Just giving you a full rundown of how this channel works right now. But yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks again for watching, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.